Thank you. Well, let me uh, begin by getting the microphone down to the height of a normal person. A lot of times after people hear that uh, biography, you know, Supreme Allied Commander, and they meet me, they generally say, wow, I thought you'd be taller than you appear to be. Um, the president told me normal commencement address is about two hours and 15 minutes, so hopefully you're all comfortable. Now, no worries, you will be having a beer at the G-Man before you know it. <laughs> yeah, the first real applause of the day there for the G-Man. Um, so you're also wondering, why am I here? And the answer is not that that beautiful introduction, thank you very much, Andy, but it's actually my lovely wife, Laura, who is a proud graduate of Dickinson College, class of 1981, Laura. <laughs> and although, as was mentioned, I'm a graduate of the Naval Academy and Tufts University for my PhD, I stood right here in 1981 when Laura graduated and was signed out of Dickinson College. So I congratulate all of you. Now here's something from that day. As I was getting ready to do the commencement address, I realized I not only couldn't remember a single thought, but I had no idea who had even given it. So I think that's a little warning to me of the impact of my talk, which I assure you will be brief. Um, but what I want you to do at this minute is know that the people you remember from this day will be your classmates, your professors, and above all, your families. Please applaud them one more time. So I've had a long and fairly eventful life, uh, and I will not overshare with you today, uh, but I do have a modest proposition. I'd like to put to the class of 2017. And to get me to that proposition, I need to begin with a phrase that I hear a lot these days. You know, I spent 37 years in the military, and very nicely, people come up to me frequently and they say, Admiral, thank you for your service. And that means a lot to me. But I also have a problem with that phrase. And my problem is that that conversation that thank you for your service has somehow come to focus on our uniformed military. And that is not right. There are so many ways to serve this nation and the world. And I'll start with people like first responders, emergency medical technicians, police, firemen, I had the misfortune to be in the Pentagon on 9-11. That airplane came crashing through. 200 of my shipmates were killed that day. I was running out of the building, believe me. Guess who was running into the building? Firemen, police, emergency medical personnel. So today I wanna to start by saying to them, thank you for your service. I'll give you another one, and it's something that Dickinson is well known for. It's the U.S. Peace Corps. Your school is noted not only for its internationalism, 70% of you go abroad, but for putting people into the Peace Corps. Those are low-paying jobs. They're often in very dangerous places, but they serve the world extraordinarily. Every year at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, I welcome 15, 20 returning Peace Corps volunteers. Today I say thank you for your service. What about teachers? On this platform today, we just put an honorary degree on someone who is a president of a university. What about all the teachers, especially in low-income, underserved, unprivileged places? My sister is a school teacher in Charleston, 
South Carolina. I think about Teach for America, voluntary work in schools, and what all of your faculty do here. You know, when I, I think about teachers, I'm always reminded of that old movie, A Man for All Seasons. And there's a conversation in it where Thomas Moore is talking to his hyper-ambitious young son-in-law. And Moore says to his son, well, you could become a teacher. And his son says, son-in-law says, but if I were a teacher, who would know it? And Moore said, well, your students would know, your family would know, God would know, you would know, not a bad audience. Being a teacher is so meaningful and it is great service to this country and today I say thank you for your service to all the teachers here. <laughs> what about our nation's diplomats, intelligence professionals, those who live abroad in the world, not in a uniform, often serving in embassies in dangerous places. In the course of my misspent youth in the Navy, I probably visited well over 100 embassies over the years. I saw so many people of extraordinary quality, courage, often under fire. Today, I say thank you for your service to those diplomats who stood alongside us in the military. I'll tell you another group that I think doesn't get the respect it deserves, especially today, and that is the media. We love to kind of bash the media, but I will tell you, so many times I have seen members of the media who go into the most dangerous situations, sometimes in far-flung places in combat scenarios, sometimes in a dangerous environment like Washington, D.C. <laughs> they go armed, not with body armor and weapons, they go with a notepad, a smartphone, maybe a cameraman. They are courageous under fire. They tell us the truth. We need them more now than ever in my lifetime. To the media, I say thank you for your service. <laughs> Two years ago, Ebola flared up in West Africa. Who went there first? Was it the uniformed military? No. It was medical personnel who risked their lives deploying into frightening pandemic situations. Nurses, doctors. I have two son-in-laws who are physicians, one daughter who's a nurse. They are courageous people who are willing to take chances and risk. Our medical personnel protect us. Today I say thank you for their service. The world of business, it is not all about making the money. We see so many entrepreneurs at the early stages who are creating systems of value and giving to this nation and to the world, or at the other end of a career pipeline. I see people like Eric Schmidt at Google Bill Gates at Microsoft, Dan Schulman at PayPal. There are no more socially conscious or responsible people in the world than some of these CEOs. So to those who create the economy that allows the rest of us to serve, to those entrepreneurs and businessmen and women, I say thank you for your service. And lastly, to our other honorary degree recipient, Representative Jim Gerlach. You know, 
Politics has become blood sport in America, sadly. Yet hundreds and hundreds of terrific women and men are still willing to stand for office, to become elected officials, many of them in low paying, extraordinarily low paying jobs in small communities, waterworks commissioners, someone like Representative Gerlach serving in the Congress, making a fraction of what he could make. These are men and women who serve us in many cases. Are there some who we like less than others? Yeah, okay. But those who are willing to stand on a wall in a political world to try and create better outcomes for our nation, like Jim Gerlach, those kind of politicians, I say thank you for your service to our country. <laughs> and there are countless others. I could go on and on about political activists, about people who run food banks, about the wonderful folks working humane societies, on and on and on. There are so many ways to serve this country beyond the honor of being in the military. It's something we should bear in mind, and it brings me to my modest proposal for all of you. It is simply that in the course of the gorgeous trajectories of your lives, find time to serve. The Jesuits say, be women and men for others. Find a time in your life, and it could be a short period, it could be a whole career, but think consciously about service. And I'll close because I'm Greek American and I'm allowed to tell one Greek story. <laughs> I'm gonna close by telling you about a group of Greeks 2,500 years ago who served. This was a time when Greece was under the threat of invasion by the Persian Empire. The King Xerxes led a massive fleet of these triremes, these huge road warships. And that group of warships, triremes, came off the shores of Athens, the capital of Greece, the only democracy in the world. And the Greeks were outnumbered five to one. They knew that democracy hung in the balance. The night before that battle, the Athenian admiral Themistocles gathered the captains of these rowing ships. And he said to them, tomorrow in the morning, you must tell your rowers, four things. Because his rowers, the Athenians, were all free citizens of Athens. The rowers in the Persian vessels were conscripted slaves. Themistocles said to his captains, tell your Greeks tomorrow they must row for their parents. They must row for their wives and their children. They must row for their city. And tomorrow, they must row for freedom. That's service. I hope you find a way to service because the next day, the small Greek fleet destroyed the Persian armada. They saved Greece. They saved democracy. That is service. As we conclude this chapter of your lives, I would ask that you find a way to serve because one day I want to say to you, class of 2017, thank you for your service. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you.